Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Technically T here, and today we're gonna to get into my first impressions of the LG V20. Now, if you see my video that I uploaded yesterday, I did an unboxing of the video. I didn't really do a first impressions during that video. All I did was unbox it, turn it on, show you guys around the device, and let you know what contents was in the box, and I left that at that. I didn't wanna get into a first impressions because I knew I wanted to do a whole separate video once I got it set up on how I actually feel about the device. So right off hand, this is the best device LG has ever made. Now me, the last LG device I think I had was the LG G4. Now I remember I literally had that phone for less than 24 hours. I, I went to Best Buy, bought it, came back home and was just like, this is just so bloaty, this is so laggy. I mean, it was after I had full set it up, it just was it just was not performing right for me and i was i just couldn't i couldn't take it took it back and i skipped over the v10 definitely skipped over the g5 because that whole modular that, that the modular designs did not catch my eye so i knew the v10 was a solid device once they started rumoring the v20 and what it had i knew i want wanted to pick this up so like i said this is the best device that lg has made and the reason i say that is because the past LG skins has been so bloaty and so heavily skinned with LG skin. It, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. But this time, with it running Android Nougat 7.0, this is what I would say the closest to stock Android that you're going to get on a skinned device. So to me, it's, it, it just doesn't remind me much of an LG interface coming from the previous LG phones. This, this this reminds me almost of a stock interface. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't give me any. It, I don't I don't feel LG. Is is basically what I'm saying. When I'm using this device since I've been using it a little over two days now, this device has been flawless. I can't say that it has the same LG lag that we've had in the previous you know the previous years of the LG phones. So far, I can honestly say. The only time I've had lag with this, with this device is if I was updating the app in the background and while it's updating and installing, I'm still trying to do everyday functions. Now that's when it will slow down. But me picking this device up, doing everyday functions, I mean, this device, I mean, it, 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 it screams. I can't say much, of, much too much bad about this device. Right now, this is one of my favorite Android devices and I would, I usually like this over my S7 Edge and over my Note 7 all day long. I would take this device over both of them. Now, I don't want to make this video too long because I don't want to get into a full review. But the, I'm just going to get into a few things that I like. And first, we're going to talk about this secondary screen up here. Now, for me, the secondary the screen acts just the same way as Force Touch does on the iPhone. I have to find myself and make myself try to use it. Now, I'm not saying that it's a gimmick, not at all. It actually has very useful functions, especially as you can see here, when I was on camera, I went to all of these apps. So if I open up YouTube and go out of it, open up Apple Music, you can see up top, they switch, and it's always gonna give you the last app that you opened up. I like that. So if you're, it, it keeps you from hitting this and going through your multitask window and trying to find the app you got, you can just go up here, boom, hit YouTube, you can go switch, boom, hit Google Plus, and it just swaps. Now that's a, a, a nice function that I will try to use. It's actually the only one that I find myself using. So we keep on going. I also have my name here. I have it set up to where it shows my name. And also I have some of my favorites that I do call here. So I have my brother, my mom, and the home, and a few other people that I'll set it up there. But that's the only, I took the tools off where it had Wi-Fi and everything. I probably could keep that back up there. We had Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, the flashlight. I took that actually off because that's just a drop down and I can access those. So I don't think I need it to be redundant on the secondary screen as well. So the secondary screen is pretty dope. I kind of find myself just staying on my name here and just using it as is. I will try to get in the, the mindset of actually using it on my day-to-day -day task. I think it's actually pretty cool when you get an incoming call and you can answer. And if you're in an app, and you get an incoming call, you can actually answer the call just from the secondary screen. You can just slide, slide the answer only on the secondary screen, which I think is pretty dope. So 
that's one function. The secondary screen is pretty nice. At nighttime, it does serve as an always on display and you will get some notification here, Facebook, Instagram, if you do have notifications that pop up. So that's pretty cool. It does, at nighttime, it will bleed. So I would say when it's completely dark, this secondary display will kind of bleed this half from here up. It'll, it'll be like a, a, a halo, a, blend, a bleed effect. Doesn't really bother me at nighttime. It is what it is. I don't really care. I'm not looking at the always on the screen display at night. So that's not big of a deal. So that's why I feel about the on screen on the secondary screen. Next, we're going to get into the screen quality. Now, the screen is great. As you know, we're rocking a 2K screen and it is not your AMOLED screens. Now, this device, the screen is not the colors. The saturation doesn't pop as much as the AMOLED. And I actually don't like for it to pop as much as the AMOLED. It's a little more realistic. The, t the color tones are a little more realistic, not so much blown out. It's actually pretty good in my opinion. I like, I like the screen. When I'm viewing YouTube videos, 1440p, it's all good. It's all there, no issues about it. One thing about it, the screen doesn't get that bright compared to my iPhone. It get, iPhone gets a little brighter than this, but it's not horrible. So screen quality is up to, up to par, and it does give a sort of... I would say a uh, cool display. Where my iPhone is more warm, this is a more cool display. And I actually prefer a more of a cool display. So screen is on point. Next, we'll talk about the speakers. We do have one bottom, bottom firing speaker. And for me, it's pretty loud. I can actually say, I mean, I have to probably do a comparison test, but from the iPhone to this, for it to have one firing speaker, it actually sounds great. So. I'm not going to take anything from it. I haven't really listened to much flat out on the device. Like I said, I only have it for two days, so I haven't really got into it fully. But from what I can tell, the bottom of the speaker is pretty okay. Um, I, the same way with the DAC. I haven't had the quad DAC. I haven't really tested that out. I don't know what, I don't have a high quality set of headphones that I can actually plug this in. I do have the B&O headphones. I did do the promotion, so they will be on the way sometime. So maybe when I get those in, I might can finally take advantage of that high quality DAC. But right now, when I plug in just my ear pods from my iPhone or my Samsung headphones or anything, it sounds the same. I don't know. I, I already can't tell a difference, but you usually have to have a high quality set of headphones to be able to tell that. Next, uh, let's get into the battery life. The, actually, the battery life has been great. Um, this is the first Android device that I actually say I could take it off the charger, use it for 20, 15, 30 minutes, and it's still on 100%. Now, you know all my Android users, there's not many phones that you can say that with. Sometimes you can take it off the charger, scroll through Instagram, and you're already down 98%. So, this phone actually has pretty good battery life, and the standby battery life is great. Let me pull off the screen for a, little, for a second, and I can actually show you my usage on day one. So, as you can see, on my day one usage, this is my first day having device. So, I have a condition the battery, if that's still a thing or whatever, I haven't did anything. I know chargers get better over time. But this is my first day of using it. And I got five hours of screen on time. And that's pretty good in my opinion. And I was using it at work. I was using it hardcore. I mean, I don't know if I even put this thing down. You know how everybody is, your day one, you're on the phone just touching and scrolling. You're just doing whatever. And that was my, that was my results on day one. And I think today, uh, I just charged it a little bit. So, and I know today I may be in that almost, basically, I think I was at five hours again. I was at five hours and four minutes on screen on time. So... Right now, it's giving me consecutive five-hour screen on time. I haven't turned anything off. I have my location on GPS. I have everything going. My brightness is usually set to pretty high. I have it all going. So this is the first Android phone that I haven't had to manipulate to get to work well, which I'm very, very impressed with that. Um, next, uh, let's talk about the fingerprint scanner. Fingerprint scanner is great, uh, super quick. It's, I actually would say, probably go on record and say, it's a little more accurate for me than Touch ID. And I say that because I find myself wiping my fingerprint off or wiping my finger off when I'm trying to use Touch ID because sometimes it just won't work. Now, I'm not saying Touch ID is bad. Touch ID is great. It's one of the best out there. But for me, I feel this fingerprint scanner is a little bit better to me. I don't know if my hands produce a lot of moisture. Therefore, Touch ID doesn't work as well for me. But... For me, even with a little moisture, this fingerprint scanner still work, which is very impressive. So very impressed with the fingerprint scanner. It's usually 100% accurate. I haven't had, 
I don't think I've had one failed attempt on this fingerprint scanner since I've been using the phone. So big thumbs up on the fingerprint scanner. Um, next, let's talk about the camera. I haven't actually, get my face off the camera. I haven't actually went out and taken, excuse my trash right there, I gotta take it out to the trash can. <laughs> I haven't actually taken this out and took pictures with it yet. But right now, I really can't report on the camera because I haven't really went out and tested it. Now this weekend I supposed to get out when the weather's nice. I'm gonna get out, supposed to get out with some car peeps this weekend, so I might snap some pictures and see how it actually does. But right now I haven't tested the camera, so I really can't comment on it. But just a few snaps I've done in lighting, in great lighting, it was good. It took some great pictures, some some good high quality pictures. So I'm pretty more usage that I'll probably get a, some good pictures out of it. So. I'm um, trying to think of what else. Uh, da, 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 da. I went over the headphones, screen, battery life. I mean, that's pretty much my first impressions. I mean, like I said, I don't want to get, I'm, this video is already too long, but that's what I, this is my first impressions on the device. Very, very solid device. This has actually been one of the first Androids that I haven't been itching to, to pop my SIM card out and throw this back in my iPhone. Usually by now, I'm already tired of it. Even two days in, even a day in, I'm already tired of an Android device. This is the first one in a, in, in, a, in a while that I haven't actually already taken the SIM out, put this back in there and sent it back to the store. I'm actually really, really enjoying the V20, V10, blah, blah, excuse me, the V20 right now. So stay tuned to my channel. I have a few cases. I already have one case in today. I could do a first impressions and the case review at the same time but i'm not going to get into that i'll probably shoot that afterwards but we're going to get into more stuff we're going to get into a fingerprint scanner battle between this and the iphone 7 plus is what i'm recording with right now uh, we're going to get into some camera comparisons we're going to get into some speed tests we're going to put the lg v20 and the 7 plus through the ring because out of one of these two devices i'll be using one of these until possibly the next flagship comes out which is probably the s8 in march so or March, April, whenever it is. So whatever one of these two, I'm a rock with. You know, probably it'll be iOS, but this has really gotten my eye. It is really, really impressing me. So I think LG, you definitely struck big on this one. Keep it up. Let's pump these updates out to fix a little bit of annoyances that's with the phone, but I do not have many. The lag isn't there. I haven't even manipulated and went to the developer settings and changed the transition effects. I haven't done that. I haven't even, this is the first device that I actually haven't put Nova Launcher on. And that says a big thing. Every Android device I get, I would throw Nova Launcher on just for the speed, don't have to do it with this. I'm running the stock launcher that came on Samsung, I mean, excuse me, on LG, and it's working wonderful. So stay tuned to the channel. This was just a quick first impressions. It was a long first impression video, it was 13 minutes. I wasn't expecting the first impression to be this way, but we're gonna get into a little more in depth when I do my full review. So. Pay attention to the channel. Give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe. Let me know what you want me to really pay attention in before my full review, and I'll be sure to get you guys some answers on that video. Take it easy, and I'll see you next time. Later.